Hey guys, so just a quick video as an update with this timing light. So I do have a working timing light that I've gotten a hold of and it's a used one, but it works. And what I have done here off camera is I have lifted pin one on the microcontroller on the bad timing light. And I've also went ahead after testing it, I've lifted the pin one as well on this good timing light. So I do have my motor off camera here running, giving me a pulse. And both screens are very, very similar here. I'll just show one. We're showing a voltage and we're showing um, pulse. It's enabled and over 3,000 RPM. So if I, if I jump this pin back to the pad, hopefully you can see that on camera. I think so. We are definitely getting a good strobe. Over here, just the one more make contact and back off. Back If I, if I keep making contact it'll work as well which is what one thing we're losing here is the pulse if i hold it on we just get the one pulse and one pulse and we remove it so what i was wanting to do here is, is look at the signals and compare them because i realized on my oscilloscope when i was actually checking the one that's working i'm getting a little bit of a pattern different because of the noise based on the actual firing so i want to do two things i want to check the actual waveform with it like this and I also want to jump and see if I can make this microcontroller jump, run this one and vice versa. If I put my probe on pin one, which is not in the circuit, just off the microcontroller here. This is what we keep getting. So the microcontroller still doesn't look exactly right to me. Where we are getting a lot different pulse here. Without it firing, a pulse doesn't look as long. We are definitely seeing something different between the two. And if I bring over a jumper, and once again, this jumper, the microcontroller making uh, contact say with the um, Q10 transistor here over to the pin we definitely get our firing output so if we solder that back down we'll be like before we'll be working but one thing to note here if I take this pin one off this microcontroller and try to drive this it actually does the same thing it just does it one if I hold it on there that is it actually just fires the one time, and when you release it, it may fire at one time. So, and by the way, our grounds are hooked up to our same point as well as this on my 12 volt battery supply. So we are we are getting the same ground reference, that is for sure. So that's a little bit, I guess, more information than I had at the first video. So I thought I would share it. Probably the only other thing worth mentioning is I'll try to have a little bit of the data sheet up here for this LM239, which is a very, very common quad differential comparator. So I did all kind of testing on it before I actually got this working unit. And as far as I could tell, everything was working fine because this chip would be so easy to replace and it would just be a direct replacement. But the only thing I could come up with, and, and even now having one to compare to, they compare very, very close. The only thing is that the output pin one uh, is the main difference in the whole circuit, honestly. But wh whether this will work decent or not, I hadn't figured out yet, but let me look at this data sheet here. We come off of, um, say, pin, pin 13, which would be output four. If I just come across this resistor and go to the bottom of this resistor, go into my transistor, we actually do flash our light. Let's see if you can see that on camera. So we're basically using this comparator output, not as a direct signal, but to, actual, um, to actually gate this transistor. Go to this um, resistor, which is R57, which limits the current. I don't know how much this can actually put out. I can look that up in the data sheet, but, but we can definitely flash it. So nothing's wrong with the transistor.
transistor out. So really, it just kind of confirms what we thought maybe in the, in the first video was it looks like it's all in this microcontroller. And I can't even um, use this microcontroller to drive it because I think it's still something else here affecting. But if I come over here, it will drive going to the bottom of this resistor as shown coming off of one of these uh, comparator outputs. So, I mean, as far as the timing, we hadn't figured out yet, but it can get it to flash in a tight. So yeah, removing pin one here or lifting pin one and, and jumping from R57 to either the output of Q9 here. And sometimes at different frequencies that'll work coming off the comparator output pins. We know that we can actually trigger our light. So I hope that little bit of extra troubleshooting helps someone else out there looking to repair one of these. And hopefully you don't run into the same thing I did and, and actually be in the microcontroller. I really have no idea if this actually worked decent or not until my automotive buddy actually takes it and tests it out. So, But I was going to either give it back to a non-working or try this. So. so I do have a really, really quick update to put at the end of this video. And I'll share this text message from my friend who did say both of these timing lights seem to work perfectly. So just thought I would include that in case you was having the same problem with yours. That it seemed to even work better than I'd hoped. Hope these additional troubleshooting steps helped a little. If they did, please like, share, subscribe. As always, I'll have some tools and things I like to use on my bench in the description of the video. Any links you click on does support the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.